Hi everybody, given that income inequality is one of the biggest criticisms of free labour markets, it's important that we know how to measure it so that we can justify whether government intervention to help redistribute income is necessary or not. Economists use two different measures of income inequality. One is a visual interpretation, the other is a mathematical calculation. The Lorentz curve and the Gini coefficient. The Lorentz curve just gives us a visual idea of what income inequality looks like for a given country. The Gini coefficient takes what the Lorentz curve shows us visually and then gives a mathematical number to that for us to interpret. Let's look at how to construct Lorentz curves first. We're going to look at Norway and South Africa and construct Lorentz curves for both, where Norway has got a very, very equal distribution of income and where South Africa's income distribution is one of the most unequal in the entire world. When it comes to constructing Lorentz curve diagrams, it's important that you get the axis labelled perfectly. On the y-axis is always the cumulative percent of income, on the x-axis is always the cumulative percent of population, where cumulative just means up to and including, nothing to concern you or to confuse you. So that means the 50th percent of the population includes the 49 percent that came before it. That's all it means. Given that we are mapping income over the population, this upward sloping linear line represents the line of perfect equality, where the first 10% of the population have 10% of the income, the next 10% have the next 10% of the income, the last 10% of the population have the last 10% of total income. So perfect equality being shown for both Norway and South Africa. When we draw our Lorentz curve, we're simply comparing what actual distribution of income is like compared to the line of perfect equality. And very simply, the closer the Lorentz curve is to the line of perfect equality, the more equal the distribution of income is. The further away our Lorentz curve is from the line of perfect equality, the more unequal the distribution of income is. So here we're going to draw our Lorentz curve quite far away from this line of perfect equality, whereas for Norway we're going to draw it closer. And it's going to look something like this. So for Norway, the Lorentz curve in red like that, and for South Africa, further away, as you can see, like that. Of course, we're economists, we're good economists, right? So we need to label our curves. So we just quickly label that Lorentz curve, and we'll label that Lorentz curve. Always show the examiner that you know what you're drawing and what those curves are called. And hopefully you can see visually that this is more unequal than this. Let's go straight to South Africa. If we take the first, I know what this is, maybe 20% of the population, the poorest 20% of the population here, they're only earning maybe 5% of total income. Whereas because we've drawn this curve quite far away, you can see that maybe the last, maybe this is only 10% of the population, are earning around 50% of total income. So the further you draw this Lorentz curve away from the line of perfect equality, the more that total income is being held by a small proportion of the richest in society. Whereas with Norway, that's less obvious. There is still some income inequality here, but much, much less than when the Lorentz curve is drawn further away. So make sure you bear that in mind. And visually, therefore, it's very easy to see. Just looking at that, you should now say that, OK, this country has got a much more unequal distribution of income than this one has. So visually when you're drawing it, it's very easy if you know what you're drawing. But this is just visual. The Gini coefficient can take this visual interpretation and convert it into a number for us. The Gini coefficient simply matches how much distance there is uh, between the Lorentz curve and the line of perfect equality compared to how much distance there could be. The equation to work out the Gini coefficient is just this. We take section A over section A plus B. Let's now put the sections onto our Lorentz curve. Section A is that, and section B is that. Section A on this diagram is that. Section B is just that. So, you should write this down. Section A is just the total area between the Lorentz curve and the line of perfect equality. Section B is the total uh, area beneath the Lorentz curve and therefore section A plus B is the total area beneath the line of perfect equality. So you can see what the Gini coefficient does. It takes the total area between the Lorentz curve and the line of perfect equality 
and it divides it by the total area beneath the line of perfect equality. And when we take this equation and we can work out these areas, we get a number at the end. Now that number can range between 0 and 1, where 0 is perfect equality and 1 is perfect inequality. How does that make sense? Well, if the figure is 0, what does that mean? It means the Lorentz curve is the line of perfect equality, i.e. there is no distance, there is no area between the Lorentz curve and the line of perfect equality, meaning there is no section A. Section A is 0. So 0 divided by anything is going to be 0. All right? So that's why 0 means perfect equality, because the Lorentz curve is the line of perfect equality. Whereas 1 is perfect inequality. Why is that? Well, that means that the last person in society is earning all of the income. So one person has got the entire income in society. And that means that there is no section B at all. If we actually take that Lorentz curve, it's going to look something like this green line. So the last person here is earning all of the income in society, a ridiculous looking Lorentz curve like that. There is only a distance between this Lorentz curve and the line of perfect equality. There is nothing beneath it, so no section B exists. So all we have is section A divided by itself, and that gives us 1. Now, we never see the extremes. We always see numbers that are in between 0 and 1. So for your knowledge, interpreting Gini coefficients, the closer the Gini coefficient is towards 0, the more equal the distribution of income, whereas the more that that number is towards 1, the more unequal the distribution of income. Just looking at these two countries here, Norway has got a Gini coefficient of always hovering around 0.25, so quite close towards zero, one of the most equal distributions of income in the world. South Africa's is the opposite, one of the most unequal, and South Africa's tends to stand at around 0.65, much closer towards one than Norway's. So that's how you interpret Gini coefficients. The last thing I'll say, guys, is uh, when it comes to you writing essays, maybe, about government policies to redistribute income, so let's say for South Africa, you're worried about their Gini coefficient, about how unequal the distribution of income is. You can use Lorentz curves, you can use Gini coefficients to show the effectiveness of government policies to help to redistribute income. So if you're talking about a certain policy and in theory it working, you might want to show the impact that that policy will have on a Lorentz curve, shifting the Lorentz curve closer towards a line of perfect equality and showing how the Gini coefficient number will move towards zero. Uh, in the process. So being able to manipulate these diagrams and figures will be extremely powerful in essays when you're talking about policies to help reduce speed income. But just in case you get a simple question about Lorentz curves or about genies, this video will help you absolutely smash it. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you all in the next video.